Hey what's up you guys, welcome back to my channel, if you're new here, hi hello, I'm Nadia and today I'm doing a collaboration video with another YouTuber called Hannah Fights. Her link will be in the description down below and also on the iCard. I hope I pointed to the right <laughs> corner. <laughs> Well, the video collaboration is comparing what private hospitals are like to NHS hospitals. I have been in adult services for a while now. Hannah is in a private mental health unit at the moment and she sent me this clip of what a private room is like. This is what a typical room looks like. So there's like, this is a safe room. So um, there's a bed, a wardrobe, um, shelves cupboard under their bed. We have an ensuite and this is just what the ensuite looks like. This is one of the newer rooms so yeah just got a toilet, a sink and a shower. And then the box. And this is what an NHS room is like. Bed. Looks like things on desk, bathroom, bright coloured door. And because I've mainly been in NHS hospitals, I decided I'd talk a bit about what an NHS hospital is like. But I'd show you at the beginning like, what the obvious difference is, like the rooms. So I did write a list yesterday of some of the things that I want to look at. So number one is the admission process. So the admission process for, I think, any mental health admission is if you are in crisis, you are a risk to yourself, you are a risk to others, or it's just needed for your treatment. For me, I've been in hospital when I've been suicidal, I've also been in when I've been manic, and I've also been in my eating disorder. There are three things that I've been hospitalised because of. Hospital admissions can occur for any mental health condition. It doesn't matter if it's anxiety or if it's schizophrenia. Any mental health condition can lead to an admission. It just depends how severe it is, it depends on treatment, depends on risk level. Risk level is the main thing that things are assessed on with the NHS. My most recent admission, two admissions, so when I was sectioned back in January to February and then when I was in last weekend, um, that was because I was both a risk to myself and I was also experiencing some psychosis. For me, it was risk to self. That's pretty much always been the criteria for me to be admitted, is some level of risk to myself. And then there's observation levels. So in patient lingo, we say levels and we know what that means. So levels vary from hourly observations, 15 minute of one to one, two to one, three to one. And then I think it's seclusion. So seclusion can also be used at any other point. I've personally been in seclusion twice within the last year and that was because I was suicidal I, or I had made an attempt in my life, wasn't cooperating. So yeah, there's that. Then we move on to medication. So medication is issued usually four times a day. If you are informal, it is totally within your right to refuse medication, though you can then be sectioned if you are refusing to engage with treatment. I don't ever refuse my medication unless I'm struggling, in which case I'm probably on a section. And that was the case back in January. So to give you an idea of what my medication is, is I take some in the morning, some in the afternoon, some in the evening and some at night. And then I have PRN, which is take when needed. Then there is a thing called I am, which anyone who's been impatient, anyone in the mental health community probably knows what an I am means. You've either refused to take a tablet to calm down or the tablet isn't a viable option. And what it means is you end up getting straight and then they inject you with either lorazepam, haloperidol, or lorazepam and promethazine. When I was in hospital in January to February, I was IM'd three times. Once with haloperidol, once with just promethazine, and once with lorazepam and promethazine. I was going through a lot in that time, and I haven't actually put out any videos from that experience because it wasn't good. They only do it when it's necessary, though I've never seen it be abused. I've never personally had it abused. Um, it to use when necessary. So that's that. In NHS wards, that there, there isn't really a daily structure. The only things that are structured are meal times. So you have breakfast, lunch, evening, and then you have medication times. They're the only things that are really scheduled. Some wards do have activities on in the day, but they are not compulsory in any way, shape or form. So the next part I want to talk about is leave. There are different kinds of leave and that depends very much so on whether you are sectioned or informal. Informal you can pretty much come and go as you please as long as you are not at risk. If you try and leave when you're at risk they can use section 5 part 2 of the mental health act which is a 72 hour holding power they can inform and then it means you have to be assessed under the mental health act which in my experience has always led to me being sectioned. When you're on a section you have to get given section 17 leave to leave the hospital. To even like get off the ward you have to have section 17 leave. 
really you can't you can there's normally gardens on most adult wards i have been on some where there isn't and it's horrible and wouldn't wish it on absolutely anybody because it is horrible not being able to get fresh air is horrible because obviously the windows don't flip it open like it's a locked wall if you are on a section 2 3 37 whatever you have to have, get given section 17 leave by a consultant so another little subject that i think people are after curious on is contraband wards vary there is no guideline really for wards in lancashire i was allowed to have my phone charger my laptop charger anything every ward i've been in in london especially and milton keynes you are not allowed to have a charger that is longer than like that like it has to be like 20 centimeter you can't you couldn't have like this because that's seen as a ligature risk. In the UK you are allowed to have your phone, you're allowed to have your laptop. You're, they give you as much freedom as they can. Right, so my last video was my last admission which gives you a little overview of what NHS hospital is like. It's nothing fancy. Private and NHS are very different. I do know someone who's in a private ward right now and someone who's in an NHS ward and there are very big differences. So I've been allowed to wear my hoodies and stuff and they haven't taken strings out so I don't know with that it just varies person to person and just to quickly just so people are probably wondering what the hell that is on my forehead so when I was in high I wrapped my head off a wall because I was having flashbacks and I just needed them to start I couldn't cope with them and I I don't even know what came over me, I've never done it before I um, whacked my head a few times off a wall and made myself go a little bit dizzy which not the best I hope this gives you a little idea of what NHS hospitals are like and if you want to know what private hospitals are like head over to Hannah Fight's channel I will again link it in the in the comments down below and hopefully on the iCard up there if I remember um, and also I did make a video yesterday about my last admission which I'll link again on the iCard it does kind of explain ish the admission it shows what the admission was anyway it wasn't a very long admission very simply because two patients on the ward had confirmed cases so I got discharged to the home treatment team who is CB day. They come they come into my flat and see me daily. Um, so I thought this would give you a bit of a idea. This is it's been an interesting collaboration. But yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon in a new video. Bye.